So uh, if you will uh, calculate the interest rate uh, by this trial and error, so we will get uh, uh, a value of uh, 0 0.7739 percent uh, or 0.77 percent approximately so if we convert it into the annual interest rate so 1 plus 0.7739 time power 12 minus 1 so it will be 9.69 percent so if now this 9.69 percent is the effective interest rate or the annual uh, yield uh, considering the closing costs whereas the without considering the closing cost because it was 0.75% uh, per month so the annual yield will be 9.38% uh, uh, so this means that the loan closing cost raised the effective annual interest rate from 9.38% to 9.69% so and then uh, there is another case that we can consider is the effective annual interest rate with closing costs and early payment so in this case uh, first uh, step is to determine the payment and then determine the closing costs and determine the early payment outstanding principal balance and then solve for uh, i using the following uh, equation so in this case uh, P will be equal to uh, closing costs uh, plus A into 1 plus I power T minus 1 over I over 1 plus T uh, plus uh, the outstanding balance multiplied by 1 plus I power uh, T. So uh, let's see it with the help of this uh, example. So if the loan in example 14 is paid off at the end of the fifth year at the time of the 60th payment uh, what effect uh, does this have on the annu effective annual interest rate so in this case if we see that the the loan is paid at the end of the 60th uh, payment so for this because uh, at the end of the 60th payment it means that we must have the outstanding balance at the end of the 60th uh, payment so uh, this outstanding balance uh, can be uh, calculated like this over here you uh, outstanding balance at the end of the 60th payment is uh, this much amount which is $95,879 okay so $9,879 was the outstanding balance in this case so the outstanding principal balance is calculated at the end of the monthly interest rate of the loan so it is $100,000 uh, uh, plus $2,500 uh, and then $804.62 into uh, 1 plus i power 60 minus 1 over i into 1 plus i power 60 so from here we can uh, calculate the effective interest rate which is now 0.80359 percent so using this uh, uh, equation so we can get the effective interest rate for the annual it will be 10.08 percent so it means that in this case if the loan were paid off uh, after five years so in this case the loan closing cost would have increased the effective interest rate from 9.38 percent to 10.08 percent okay. okay so uh, the next example is uh, your company has an existing loan uh, with monthly payments uh, principal and interest of uh, uh, 1.1 uh, 1100 dollar and uh, uh, there are uh, 60 payments left on the loan uh, and the loan has an unpaid balance of $55,000 so the your company is looking at the possibility of replacing this loan with the loan with the closing costs of uh, $1,590 so at what interest rate would this uh, become 
uh, attractive so in this case uh, what you have over here is uh, the, your monthly payments are $1,100 and 60 payments are left so so to replace this loan with uh, another loan while maintaining your company's available cash uh, at the uh, same level a loan of uh, $56,590 uh, would need to be uh, secured which means that uh, which is actually equal to the $56,000 which is the uh, uh, unpaid balance plus $1,590 is the uh, closing cost. So setting the new loans payment equal to the payment of the existing loan, uh, we get the following. So, so now $1,100 and then this, if we compare it with this $56,590 as the new amount of the loan, and for the remaining uh, uh, 60 months period so we get uh, from trial and error the interest rate of 5.18 uh, uh, percent which is equivalent to 6.23 percent annual interest rate so it means that uh, uh, this is the interest rate at which uh, uh this is the interest rate at which this loan would become attractive so this means that uh, if the new loan is given to you at this interest rate 6.23 percent or less then the new loan it will be better to take the new loan okay so these were some of the examples for the uh, short uh, term loans uh, uh, so no, for the long term loans and then let's look at the uh, short interest on the short term loans so interest on the short term loans uh, is generally uh, calculated a little bit uh, differently than the uh, long term loans uh, so in this case uh, the uh, discounted discounting interest rate increases the effective interest uh, rate uh, paid to the loan by the decreasing the amount of the principal available to the borrower and requiring the interest to be paid at the beginning of the loan so the interest uh, rate in this case uh, can be given by this formula which is equal to the p uh, divided by uh, p minus the initial total interest paid minus one okay so let's see it with the help of the example so determine the effective uh, annual interest rate on a $100,000 uh, short term loan uh, with a term with a term of 1 year and a, a nominal interest rate of 10%. So the bank discounts the uh, interest. So in this case uh, find the total interest paid on the loan we get the following because in this case the interest is uh, uh, is a short term loan 10% uh, nominal interest rate and the term is one year so if in one year on a $100,000 loan the interest will be $10,000 so this interest on the loan $10,000 will be deducted from the loan uh, proceeds at the time the loan is uh, acquired so leaving the borrower with $90,000 as the net proceeds from the loan okay. So this is what have what has happened so so they in this short term loan according to the conditions of the loan the uh, interest uh, for one month one year has already been deducted and the borrower has got ninety thousand dollar okay so the effective interest rate in this case will be a hundred thousand dollar divided by hundred thousand minus uh, ten thousand minus one that will be 11.11 percent in this case so a simple formula which can be used for the effective interest rate so actually although the in 10 percent interest rate is uh, uh, just a nominal value over here actually the interest rate is 11.11 percent because the interest was charged earlier okay from the loan 
Okay, so in this case, uh, if uh, in the next example, the loan in example 17 has an origination fee of $2,000. So determine the effective interest rate on the loan. So in this case, in addition that $2,000 origination fee has also been charged. So in this case, uh, what there is, there is more uh, deduction from the loan, $2,000 more. So $100,000 divided by $100,000 minus $12,000, that is the $88,000 which was which was the net obtained so in this case the uh, interest effective interest rate has increased to 13.64 percent by this previous formula okay so now uh, I want to discuss about the uh, lines of uh, credit so lines of credits are special uh, arrangements for the short term loan and the line of credit uh, can be uh, the, uh, calculated uh, by using this uh, formula. So what is this formula? This formula is the uh, interest due for a period T and ADB is the average uh, daily balance for period T and I is the periodic uh, interest rate. So a line of credit, uh, credit consists of a lender uh, committing uh, to a loan a borrower to loan a borrower up to a specified amount of money on as a needed basis and the borrower may borrow up to the limit of the line of credit one week and pay it off the next week so the lines of credit are used to finance short-term fluctuations in cash flows so the borrower pays interest on the amount of funds borrowed at any given time so the interest rate on the line of credit is usually a variable rate that changes frequently. So the interest is usually accrued monthly for lines of credit. So lines of credit may use a monthly interest rate and then using 12 equal monthly periods per year or monthly interest rate taken into account the number of days in each period. So in this case for the lines of credit this average daily balance is uh, to be determined first and then based on this average daily balance uh, the interest accrued in a certain time period is calculated. So for example how much interest would be charged on a line of credit that charges a, a monthly interest rate of 1.1% if the average daily balance for the month was $55,100. So uh, simply speaking, the interest charged will be 55,100 times 0 0.011 equal to $606.1. So that will be the interest charged. Uh, lines of credits are of uh, two types. Uh, one type is the uh, compensating, uh, is called as the compensating balance. So in compensating balance, uh, uh the uh, it uh, in this provision it is uh, required uh, that the percentage of the maximum amount uh, that may be borrowed from the line of credit be placed in a low or no interest bearing account so this is uh, known as a compensating balance so a typical compensating balance is uh, 10 percent so for example if you were to set up a ten thousand uh, dollar line of credit uh, with the requirement that a 10% compensating balance be placed in a low in a non interest bearing savings account so $1000 would need to be placed in the savings account leaving $9000 from the line of credit available for use uh, by your company so from the time the line of credit was set up your company would be paying interest on the $1000 compensating balance even though you would you could not use that money so the compensating balance reduces the funds available from the line of credit and increases the effective annual interest rate. So the effect the compensating balance has on the actual interest rate is dependent on the amount of money borrowed against the line of credit. So uh, let's see it with the help of the uh, example. So this is the uh, formulation for this uh, line of credit that uh, for the compensating balance so effective interest rate is equal to the interest amount of interest divided by the funds available 
Okay, so 